Welcome to another beautiful Defemorember day. We are on day 16. So today you get my favorite backdrop again. <laughs> this is our paper bag for today. Again, this is not really one of my favorites, even though it has dragonflies on it. <laughs> So our animal today is the raccoon, or two in this case. And our snack is a very puffy one. For a change, we have a savory one. And this one is from Romania. I've never had any snacks from Romania, so I'm very excited. They're called pizza snack. This is what they look like. Let's have a taste. Somehow they don't taste very fresh. They taste like they're past their expiry date, although they're not really. I would never have guessed that this is pizza flavor. I'm afraid I cannot give these more than 10 out of six. So sorry, Romania, I wanted to give you more. So let's see what our prompts are for today. So today's prompts are packaging and index card booklet. With this one, I honestly don't know what we were thinking when we came up with that index card booklet. So let's tackle this together. I was looking through my things trying to find an index card. The only blank one I have was this one. It's a very pretty one. It has golden lines on both sides. But this is the only one I have. <laughs> so yes, I could make a booklet out of it by just folding it in half. That would be very easy, but I didn't want to do that. So instead I thought, well, maybe you don't have any index cards either. And I definitely don't want you to go out buying index cards just for this prompt. So instead I decided to make another freebie. So this one has two different sizes of index cards. We have a few different designs here. And I printed this out on 200 GSM so that we can make a booklet out of it. You can find this freebie linked below in the description box. So I'm going to probably use these two. So I'll start off by cutting those out. So I have both of these cut out. They are of course blank on the inside. And next I want to fussy cut these two cute raccoons because they are going to be our decoration on the front of the booklet. So here's our two raccoons and they will go here on the front side of our booklet. So our booklet is going to be like this. So it'll open like that. When we take a closer look at the raccoons, we see that he is very interested in what he's holding in his hand and he's holding, I don't know, a fruit or something. But what if he was to hold something a little more fun than just a fruit? <laughs> what if we gave him some fun balloons to hold? I have this die cut set from Action, which has these balloons. I never thought I would use the balloons. I actually bought it because I like the tag shape. But I think these balloons would be really cute for him to hold in his hand. Maybe we can only make one of them work. And then we could just cut the second one away, but we'll see. Maybe I can do something. I don't know yet. And since we need to use packaging as well, I want to use a part of today's pizza snack. I think this green part here might be fun to try. And no, I did not eat all of those pizza snacks. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to eat any more of those. Yeah, so they will just about fit on that green part. So I will take those to my die cut machine and then we'll see if that will work. So let's check our dies or our die cuts, I should say. I always mix up the two. <laughs> it also wouldn't be so hard to draw balloons, but I figure since I have the die cut, I should probably use that. Okay, so that doesn't really work like that unless we say he's holding on to one with his mouth or we cut this one off and maybe we can just shift it down a bit so that he's holding both of them 
I think that would make more sense. So they're actually just attached on the top and the bottom. So that would be the single one. And then let's just cut off these edges and see if we can move that down so that he's holding both. Yes, that would actually work. So I'm going to cut away the fruit that he's holding in his hands. I'm so sorry. I'm taking away his food. <laughs> and then I can also cut a little bit here so that the strings of the balloon can come out there. So I did not have the nerves to add this one. This one already took me a few minutes to get squeezed into his little paw. So I'm going to leave it at the one, but instead of this balloon, there's also this present in here. So I want to try that one on my chocolate foil, which is also packaging, because since he has a balloon, maybe it's his birthday. <laughs> so let's see what that will look like. So here's what that present looks like. It's very cute. So maybe he should have it behind him somewhere. Ooh, you know what I see. <laughs> oh my goodness, do you see this? This bow here of the present makes the perfect crown. So since he's apparently the birthday boy or the birthday raccoon, <laughs> he needs a crown, of course. Oh wow, this is, this is amazing. So let's give him his crown. <laughs> Do you have as much fun making your ephemera as I do? I hope you do. And then we also have this banner here. Look at that. Can we find a spot here? We can either make it in green or I can also use my golden chocolate foil. Maybe I can add both. So here's the gold one. <laughs> I love it. And here's the green one. Maybe the other way around. Let's put the green one in the back. So I cut out another one of these presents with my chocolate foil because I'm thinking if it's his birthday and he's a guest, then he needs to bring a present, right? So he'll have that on his back. It's a bit big, but it's okay. <laughs> so I'm happy with my focal points, but of course our background is a bit blah. <laughs> So we need to do something about that. The challenge here is to make the background interesting without completely getting rid of the look of the index card, because otherwise we could have just cut out a piece of cardstock and that's it. So first of all, I want to have something for the raccoons to stand on. And to do that, I'm going to use one of Louise's techniques where she uses eggshells to create a texture paste. I will link Louise's video below. I think it's super fun to do this. So I just want to make sort of like a little ground on the bottom here. I'm going to start by adding matte gel on the whole card. And then I'm going to start putting down some eggshells here on the bottom. I'm just going to press down because I want a lot of cracks. So this is a substitute for crackling paste. <laughs> I think it's so cool. So for more detailed instructions, please check out Louise's video. She explains it really in a lot of detail and she shows you several different options. Louisa even used some colored Easter eggs. Okay, my matte medium is drying a bit, so I'll add a bit more. We'll add some more on top then anyway. It's easier if your fingers are not sticky <laughs> because otherwise the shells will stick to your fingers instead of the index card. So let's try it out. Yeah, 
I think that will work. Okay, so now I'll add another layer of matte medium. I'm sure this would also work with thinned down glue or Mod Podge. Then I'm going to dry this with my heat gun. And then we're going to add a thin layer of white gesso. This could also be done with white paint. My brush was wet here, so that automatically will thin down the gesso. So I'll dry this again, and then I'll add another coat of gesso. Second coat. And I'll dry that again. So this is what we have now. And this is where I want to divert a little bit from what Louisa does. So I'm going to add a bit of water on top. I'm going to use my eye zinc spray in coffee, but I'm not going to spray it. I'm just going to use the nozzle here and hope that this will run in between the cracks. I think adding the water first was very important because otherwise I don't think it would spread as well. I think I'll spray a little bit more water. And then I'll dab some of it away. Mm, that was too much. <laughs> I was hoping that if I would dab it, it would stay in the cracks, but it's not staying enough. So let's try that again. I just love how that goes into the cracks like that. It looks really cool. Okay, this time I'm going to be more careful with taking it off. I really just want to take it off from the flat surfaces. So let's try taking some of this off with a wet paint brush. I want the surfaces to be lighter. It's not really working. <laughs> I think this works better with watercolor. I mean, they are getting lighter, but again, I don't really have the dark parts in the cracks like I want. Hmm. This is not the desired result yet. I also have the black suit oxide spray. So let's try that. So again, I will make it wet. So again, I'm going to use the nozzle. Oh, wow. Let's add some more water. Then let's dab some more away. And again, let's try to get the surfaces lighter. I'm dipping my brush in water in between. Even though this is a water brush, but it's kind of hard to get the water out with this. Now it's more gray. It's still not really how I wanted it to be. I dried this a little bit in between. And now I also want to add some forest moss. This time I'm going to try adding it to the cracks first without adding water first. And then I'm going to use my mini mister and we'll see what happens. And I also want to have this run into the card a little bit. Then I'll add a bit more here in the cracks. I think you just got to experiment and continue until you're happy with the end result. 
it's going to be different every time obviously which is super fun and now i'll dry it again now we have this i think it looks pretty cool because these actually look like rocks but I do want to see if I can lighten up some of the flat surfaces one more time. So again, I'm taking a wet water brush. This, this is oxide. It should, in theory, come off. Yes. You see how those have lightened up in comparison to these? Thank you once again, Louise, for showing us these fun techniques. Oh yeah, huge difference. They really look like rocks. I'm so in love. And for the final touch, I want to see what it looks like. <laughs> yes, I'm going to add some gold. <laughs> I want to try it so bad. So I'll try it with my brush very, very lightly. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't want everything to be gold. This kind of makes it come to life. But I actually also really loved the way it looked without the gold. So there's our gold. <laughs> this is our backside, which now in comparison is quite boring. So I want to have this have a similar look to this one, at least the green part. So without adding anything on top, I'm just going to spray it first. And then I'll add some forest moss. I'll just spray it this time. I'll spray some more because this is more intense at the moment. And I'm going to dry that. So this is the backside now. I think it looks super interesting, actually much nicer than this, but that's okay because we have some other elements to add on top. And I think I can now add all of these. Oh, they look perfect on these rocks. <laughs> Almost forgot about his crown, how could I? Somehow I think the background still needs something. Maybe it needs a little bit of gold spray. Hmm, I'll mist it a little bit. And then, hmm, maybe we can do that with the nozzle. I think it needs a little more spray. I think it also needs some more forest moss. Let's just spray some of it. The gold has disappeared, but the green looks great after, I was gonna say ironing it, no, after using the heat gun on it. So I'm going to glue down all of my elements. I just changed my mind. I'm going to try something else first. <laughs> I have this stencil here. This is from Action. And I want to see if I use a baby wipe, whether I can take some of this off and then we get the pattern. doesn't have to be precise. I just want to have some more interest on this background. Let's see. Yeah, that is quite messy. <sighs> I'm not sure if I like that. On second thought, it kind of looks like there's trees here in the background, which actually works for our scene. So I'll just go with it. Don't overthink it, just do it. <laughs> so now I need to glue all the elements down. So everything is glued down. And one thing I want to add is some shadow underneath the raccoons. I'll use this, which is what I usually use for my splatters. It's very thinned down acrylic paint. Of course, on the wax, this is not ideal now. <laughs> yeah, it's not working great on the wax. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And let's fade it out a little bit. So I just added some water. Let me dry this. 
That's actually quite okay. Better than I thought, considering we have so much wax there. And since we have a few unintentional splatters here, I think I should add a few intentional ones. I just want very tiny ones. So in order for this to become a booklet, obviously we need to join the two. And what I'm going to use to do that is some fabric, which has also been dyed with my forest moss. So I just sprayed that on. I have used this for another project and I have this left over. So this is of course perfect. So I'm going to cut a piece. I'm cutting it a little bit taller than my card is because I still want to fray the edges a little bit. And now I can just glue that on so that we have a little booklet. So I'm adding some textile glue to the edge here. If you don't have textile glue, just use tacky glue, whatever you have. For a small piece like this, you can definitely get away with a glue that is not specifically meant for textile. And then I'll add some glue here. What I probably should have done was to ink it up before, but I can still ink it up now. And I'll do that with my walnut stain. So I used my heat gun to dry this a little bit because it was moving around. So now we can open this and of course the inside is a catastrophe at the moment. <laughs> but before we cover these two, I want to add a ribbon as a closure and I just used some of that same ribbon and I cut a more narrow strip, which I'm now going to just glue on the inside. I just want to make sure I have the same length on each side for the closure. So I'm just finding the middle, which is here. And I'll just start gluing from there. Okay, I'm going to dry this. So now we can easily close it by just tying these off but we still need to cover the insides. So what can we put there? I found some photos of a walk from about a month ago where the trees were really pretty. And so I put those together and I have a tree freebie for you as well. So you get two freebies today. Look at how gorgeous these colors are. I have these three tree photos for you in case you want to move, move them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in case you want to use them. And I have designed these to be exactly the same size as my index cards. So they will go in this booklet perfectly. And I want to show you the difference of the print. This here is printed on matte photo paper. And this here is printed on regular copy paper. So we see the colors of the photo paper are more vibrant. You see more of the reds here. Here it looks a lot more orange. These tones are a lot cooler. The regular copy paper has warmer tones. So just so you know, there is a bit of a difference. I'm going to use these vibrant colors. I'll definitely use this gorgeous tree. And then on the other side, I think I'll use this yellow one. So then I can just glue these onto the backs. So I'm going to ink around these as well. And even though these trees already look stunning as they are, I want to give them a little more magic by adding some gold embossing powder with my embossing pen. So I'm just going to make small dots on various parts on the tree so that it will look like these leaves are like glistening gold in the sun. I'll try it first just on the one before I mess up both in case this looks like crap. <laughs> that was a lot. That's totally not what I had thought it would look like, but let's see what it looks like once it's heated up. It's hard to tell at the moment. Oh, it actually worked. Look. 
It looks like some of the leaves are just catching the sunlight. Oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so I'll do the same thing for this tree. <sighs> I love it. Okay, now we can close this. And in case you're wondering what is the relevance, for these trees with these raccoons well it's where they're going to have their birthday party what could be a more beautiful venue than celebrating under trees like this so now let's just tie this up so now i still want to make a pocket in which we can add this to and since we have packaging as a prompt I again want to use some packaging. This is not from the snacks. This is packaging I have saved from before and it's from one of my favorite teas, which is Genmai Cha. Cha means tea. So it's loose green leaf tea with roasted rice. I know it sounds weird if you've never had it, but it's actually really, really yummy. So I'm going to cut a chunk out of this so that I can use that as my pocket. And I'm also going to cut the sides open because I only want one layer. Maybe I should check first if this is going to fit. Hmm, it's again going to be a super close fit. But what can I do? Okay, I know. I'll cut it here and then I can sew this piece down. So I stitched this down. So now I have a bigger pocket and this should fit in here easily. So let's find a page for this. This isn't so bad. I like how this and this, they go together nicely. Let's do that. Just want to wipe this glob away. Otherwise, maybe my booklet won't be able to go in all the way. So I had this clamped down for a few minutes. And I think now I can go ahead and put this booklet in carefully yeah it fits another victory 16 packaging and index card booklet check if you're still here you're absolutely awesome <laughs> see you back here tomorrow to tackle number 17 love you guys Mwah. Mwah. <laughs>